Hey, so I'm going to show you how to install, play, and create custom levels and getting over it. First off, huge shout out to uh, Joro2 because he made this mod and the Unity package to help with making levels and uh, we wouldn't be able to play custom maps without it. So if all you want to do is play custom maps, all you're going to need is the mod, which is this assembly C Sharp. Uh, links will be in the description. So you can just download that. Once you've downloaded that, you're going to want to go to your game directory. You can easily do that by going through Steam. Go to your game, settings, properties, local files, browse local files. Now that you're in the game directory, go to getting over data, go to managed, grab the assembly C Sharp we just downloaded, and replace the existing one with that file. Now launch your game and you should have a select level button. After you launch your game, there should be a new folder created called mods and another one called levels. And this is where you're going to put the levels. If the map comes with more than just a scene file, say it comes with a text file as well, make sure you copy that in as well. As of making this video, I don't think there is any full maps that are completed. I am currently working on one as you can see, and I'll make a video on that when it's completed. Now on to creating maps. So if you want to create a map, I would recommend just downloading this whole folder. So I just right click on here, download. Once you've downloaded that, you can extract the files. Now in here he already has some tutorials if you just want to take a look at those. There's also a readme documentation, make sure you check that out. Because if anything's added to the mod later on, I'm sure he will update this and put all the information in here. Next up, you're going to want to download Unity. And I'm not entirely sure what versions are compatible, but currently I know for sure that using the version the game was made in is our best bet. If you go to the Unity download archive, so this is the version that Getting Over It was made in, Unity 2017.4.22, so download that. Now that you've got Unity, go to Projects, New Project, and name it whatever you'd like. Once your project is open, you can go to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and now in the stuff we downloaded from the drive under Creating Levels, there is a Unity package. So you're going to want to navigate to that, all files, and import the Unity package. Import all. Now once you've got that imported, there's some stuff in here. To start out, there's an example level. If you want to take a look at the scene on that, which you can just open up here. And you're going to want to click on 2D. And here's the example level he has built. So, first off, we're going to create our own scene. Double click to open it up, go down to the bottom right under Asset Bundle, we're going to do New, Level 1, and Scene. If you go into the Level Tools folder, under Prefabs, there is a Level Reference and a Player Size Reference. You can select those two and drag them into your scene. Make sure to double check your level reference is at 000. And we've also got the player size reference. And that's where the player normally starts. Now there's two types of maps you can build. You can build an add map, so it basically adds whatever you want to the existing map, or you can build a replacement map where you're not going to be using this. You can toggle the level reference on or off here. Okay, let's add our first object to the scene. So a couple ways you can do that. First, you can go to the Unity Asset Store. There's lots of free stuff on there you can use. And remember, we're using Unity 2017. So check Unity 2017. And I'm gonna check free assets. And you can browse through here or search whatever you want. I'm going to grab this low poly house pack. I'm going to go to my assets, click import, import all. Now let's see what came with that. So we've got prefabs, structures, buildings. So we're going to grab this building, we're going to throw it in our scene. 
Um, I'm actually going to rotate it. Let me get the door at the front. Now, we need to add a collider to the object so that the player has something to interact with. You go to Add Component, Physics 2D, Polygon. Sometimes there's an issue with adding colliders to 3D models where when you rotate the model, the Polygon Collider will rotate with it. As you can see, this doesn't quite line up. So instead, I'm going to create an empty game object. Let's just call it Building Collider. Now in the Building Collider, add Component, Physics 2D, Polygon Collider. Now we're going to go to Edit Collider, and we are going to trace out the house. I'm actually going to make two separate colliders for this, and I'll show you why in a minute. We're going to make the wood and the stone a different collider because they're a different type of material. Alright, there we go. Now we have a collider drawn around the house. Alright, now I also added a collider for the stone base. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add some custom layers. We're going to use the ones that are in Getting Over It so it knows how to read them. So we're going to go to Layers. Edit layers, and then layer number 10 is going to be terrain, and layer number 12 is going to be background. So you'll notice in this clip here that the background is separate from the foreground. They're kind of using two different cameras. The foreground, which is the terrain layer, is 2D and static, and the background is 3D and moves around in the background. So obviously we want this house to be in the foreground because we're going to be climbing it so we're going to make it part of the train and we're also going to need to make sure we do the same thing with the colliders so select those two as well change them to terrain just to keep things nice and clean I'm going to put this inside of one object two colliders in that building inside of a house and now when I select this object I can move them all together Now from this point you can actually save it, this will be in the game, it'll have a collider, and it'll be functional. But it won't have any friction values, so you're going to be slipping all over the place. So the next thing we want to do in this level tools folder, we're going to go to tools, we're going to go to scripts, and we want to take this ground collider script and add it on any of the colliders. Put one on the base collider, and put one on the building collider. Now when we select on these colliders, we have this ground collision script. And what this does is it tells the game what material you're touching so it can play a different sound and a different particle effect. So for the house, we're going to select wood. And for the base, we'll keep it on rock. Now for the friction values, you'll notice the material is set to none. We're going to go to our Getting Over Tools again, Physics Materials. And these are the physics materials that Getting Over It uses. You can see they have different friction values up here. So for something like wood or stone, I would say both of those are probably super friction. So we're going to put super friction and then go to the base collider, super friction. The main things to check on all of your objects before you compile, make sure they're on the right layer, so terrain, make sure you have your material on your collider, and make sure you have your ground script with the material type. Now you're not limited to the Unity Asset Store, you can actually put in any 3D models you want, you can even make your own. So we're just going to search up free 3D models. Here's some rocks I found just scrolling through, so we're going to download these. Going to download the objects and the textures. I'm going to create a new folder to put my assets in. Throw our objects in. Alright, let's just grab one. Uh, SM Big Rock 02. Let's scale that up a bit. Put it under the player for something to stand on. Now we're going to add a new collider for that one as well. So create empty. Add component. And again, the things we want to check. We need our physics material. We need our ground collider script. Set to rock. And make sure it's on terrain. And also make sure the rock is on the train as well. And if it has any children, yes to children, put them on the same layer. So I just grabbed some train from the asset store. 
Okay, that might be a bit more than I needed. Alright, I tried to scale it down a bit, but it doesn't want to scale down. <laughs> let's, uh, yeah, let's just... Sure. <laughs> In hindsight, you could probably go back and get a different one. Alright, and for this terrain, we're going to set the layer to background. So basically, in 2D, your foreground objects will look like this, and your background objects will look like this in 3D, because there's actually two cameras and getting over it. Clearly, that is way too far away. So from the 3D view, we're going to pull it way up from 16,000 to... Okay, one. That works, I guess. But yeah, now, our foreground will look like this. So this is the foreground. And then our background, all the stuff behind, will look like this as you're playing. So you see mountains in the background and be sure to make sure while you're building your map that you are on the 2d camera otherwise your colliders will not line up with your objects and one more thing i like to do while you're building a map because this will make it much easier later is to make two objects one called terrain and the other called background objects now that just got real confusing because the background i'm using is called terrain but ironically it goes in background objects and then all of our foreground so our colliders our house our house colliders that's all gonna go in our terrain. Now what we can do is when we're building the map you can disable the background to make it less confusing and see what your terrain looks like or if you're building a background you can disable your terrain. Also note you can take your terrain object and you can change all of the children to terrain at once. You can do the same with background. You can change everything to background. Okay and now we have a background element. We have some foreground elements. We got our colliders and our materials and now we can test it out. Before we build the map to test, we're going to disable the player or the player scale reference because we don't want them in our map. The level reference I'm going to disable. I don't think it matters though because it's positioned behind the camera. And for the directional light, if you're building an add map, so it's adding to the existing getting over it map, I would disable this so that you don't have two suns. If you're creating a brand new map, I would keep it on so that you have a new sun in your scene. Make sure you disable the camera before you build your map or you're going to have some weird sound bugs. Okay, so let's save our scene. If we go to our bundles folder, you can right click and hit build to level asset bundle. And depending on how much you have in your map, this may take a few minutes. Okay, now that this is done building, we have our level1.scene file. I'm gonna right click, go to show in explorer. Now we're gonna take that level1 scene file, I'm gonna copy it, and we're gonna put that in our levels folder. Now let's try it out. Select level, level one. There we go. A bit steep and slippery, I'd say. <laughs> and as you can see, we get the wood sound and particle effect. And then down here, we get the sparks and the stone sound. So that's an add map, so it's adding to our existing map, right? And we also added this rock underneath. Now if you want to do a replacement map to completely replace the existing map, so go back to your levels folder and create a new text file. Now you're going to want to name this the same as your level. So we'll do level 1, and inside of that text file all you need to do is type in mode equal R. So it's mode equals replace. Save. And now we have a replacement level. So the original level is gone. We got our rock. We got our house. And we have our clearly worked fantastically mountain background. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that mountain was probably far too huge and is way too far away from the camera right now. <laughs> I'm just going to get rid of that background for now. I also recommend you change the shader types to specular. Okay, so now I disabled the background. And I also changed this texture to specular. You can see it looks a little nicer. It's not just super white. So that's the basics, and you can fully build a map with that. Um, there are, however, some other things you can do as well. Like if you want to make objects that have physics, just grab a cardboard box off the asset store. Now this one actually already comes with one that has physics on it, but I'm just going to use the regular one so I can show you how. We're going to add that to our scene. Let's scale that up. Let's have it start out falling on the tree. We'll start up here. So what I'm going to do, add component, physics 2D, rigid body. Oh, I guess it's conflicting with the collider. So let's, uh, let's just remove that. We already know how to add our own colliders anyway. Rigid body. There we go. 
um, and have the simulated checked. You can also change the weight and some other stuff. Now for this one, we'll just add a box collider. Since it's a perfect square, we don't need the polygon collider. And I'm adding it here, not in a separate game object, because I didn't rotate this object at all, so it should be facing the camera perfectly. Things to check. We want to make sure it's on terrain. We're going to do our physics material, and we need the ground collider script. And there's actually already cardboard in the game, so it is one of the options. Perfect. Oh, and let's also not forget, change our shader to specular so it looks nicer. Now, especially for custom maps, if you want to change the position the player starts in, you're going to want to create an empty game object and just name that to start pose. And position it where you want it. Just to test out, let's, uh, let's move them back a little bit and put them up in the air. Now another thing you might need, especially if you're doing a completely new map, is the custom trigger. Things you can use this for are showing the reward screen, automatically resetting the game, or teleporting the player to another position. So if you go to your level tools, tools, script, you have this custom trigger script. Now you have to add this to an object with a collider on it, or you can just create a new object. So we're going to make an empty object called finish game. Add component. Let's just do a box collider. Let's put the custom trigger script on it. Trigger type. Let's say finish. So now when the player crosses this line or enters anywhere in this box, it's going to finish the game. I haven't actually tested the teleport, so let's try that out. Alright, so I just grabbed some crystals. Let's make it so that if you touch the crystal, it'll teleport you. Grab our custom trigger, throw that on our collider, and make it teleport. Now, teleport destination. Where do we want it to go? Let's grab our player reference. Let's say it teleports to the barrel. And now we have the position. We also have the option to either keep the momentum or not keep the momentum. So when you go through it, if you're moving sideways, say you want to jump through a portal, it'll allow you to keep your momentum, or if you uncheck it, it'll stop you. So for this case, I'd rather him not smash into the wall immediately, <laughs> or fall down if you're going to the left, so let's just keep that unchecked. Okay, let's test out our box, our new start position, and our triggers. So save our scene, go to bundles, and build. Grab our level one scene file again. Put that in our levels. Okay, it looks like our start position didn't work. Okay, we've got our box, it's got physics. Now, how about our teleport crystal? Ah, right, okay, so we need to make sure on the collider we check this box, is trigger. We need to make sure that it is selected. So we'll do the same thing for the finish game collider. Try that again. Hey, there we go. And our finish line should be right over here. Cool. And now with all these tools we've used, you're basically able to create a new map any way you want with full freedom. And there's many other things you can do in Unity. You could probably build some wild things into a scene that I don't even know how to do. I barely know how to use Unity. I only started using it a few days ago for the sake of building a map. And I'd uh, be really interested to see what kind of things people make. I imagine there could be puzzle maps using physics props and teleportation things and challenge maps, very decorative maps, lots of different things. I'm excited to see what people create. If you have any maps you'd like to share, I'd love to see them. Uh, you can stop on by our Discord. There'll be a link in the description. Um, I'm sure there's a few things I forgot to mention, so I'll put an FAQ in the description as well for anything I may have missed. Well, thanks for watching, guys. We've got a new map coming very soon. And uh, please make sure to subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!